Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com and we are looking at Android 10. This is a second watch review of a brand new Android 10 style watch, the Thor 6. I hope you had a chance to look at the Cospet Prime 2. That was the very first one because I go into a lot of detail on Android 10 on that one. It's all over an hour long. Um, so we're not going to hit as many of the points on this review of the Thor 6 uh, so that we can have complimentary reviews with that one. When you open the box, we get in here, we've got the uh, watch, a manual, and the information for you. AliExpress, the company store for Z-Blaze, their official store, has the Thor 6 available, and it's... Um, Check the show notes for the link to come over here and pick it up. In addition, AliExpress has it, and of course, Banggood carries it. This is their uh, listing for it right here. And again, check the show notes to use our link. We really appreciate it when you use our link because they track that, and that helps them to decide if they're going to send more watches for review. So I know you can get there many different ways, but coming through our link is the most beneficial if you want to continue seeing these great reviews on smartwatch ticks. Okay, what's this thing got in it? Android 10 for one, a lot of memory for another. Let's walk through it. Overall spec-wise, 4 gigabytes of RAM, just like the Cospet Prime 2. You're going to see a lot of similarities and some differences. 64 gigabytes of storage in here. Of course, it does 4G phone calling. It's got an octa-core processor. Didn't talk a lot about this on the other review, so let's dive into it. It's called the Helio P22. It's four times A53, 2.0 gigahertz. I think the other one's a little slower. Uh, maybe not. And uh, four of the, of them are at 1.5 gigahertz, making an octa-core processor. Can you believe it? In a watch? Wow. Okay. We've got a capacitive multi-touch, a camera 5.5, five, um, video recording supported. Why, where is the app? Uh, as in all of these. And here's your bands for 4G, which are pretty much standard now. And um, SIM card is the nano in the back. We're looking at a 1.6 inch IPS display, 400 by 400. Remember the Cospet Prime 2 is 2.1 inches. You'll see it later. I'm going to have a cameo appearance from that watch. It's much bigger, 480 by 480. So when you size them up and down, I don't have the pixel per inch resolution on them, but they're comparable because we're getting a good 400 by 400. Now, case in point on this one, um, the Thor 6, Compared with the Thor 5 Pro, the predecessor, this one does not have a flat tire. If you remember, the old one had a flat tire. It was 1.6 inch, about 380 or 320 by 320, I think. Anyway, um, yeah, it had a flat tire. We'll show you that one, too, by comparison. So all in all, we've got a nice size screen for most people's wrists, is what I'm getting at. The uh, niche market is a little bit different when you go to a really big watch. Okay, we got an 830 milliamp hour capacity battery. That's about half the size is on the um, Cospet Prime 2. However, it's of course a smaller uh, overall watch platform. So battery life, I don't know. We haven't been able to test that because I'm running through a review every other day. Um, but it's got battery life. We hope to squeeze at least a couple of days out of them. Here's all the typical things that are supported, all the other functions listed. It's uh, got a ceramic bezel, plastic, I don't think it's a plastic strap, probably. You know, there it is, silica gel, but the body is plastic and ceramic so that it can get those 4G signals in and out. And overall size and weight is listed here as well. All right, it's time to take a look at it. We're going to pop it out of its little holding spot, individually wrapped here. Obviously, the bands are removable, right? And there you go. It's a sweet design. It's got a nice bezel around it, camera on the side, two buttons. There's the little bump out for the front-facing camera. On the back, we've got what looks like the carbon fiber. Well, not really. It's a different kind of a design. SIM card cover, uh, heart rate diode area, and check this out. I cannot for the life of me figure out why we have an extra pin there. 
there's four pins plus one. Now, when we open the accessory box, I've been in here already. I've taken it out. I've charged it. I've set it up. It's on Wi-Fi. But I am put it all back so you could see the unboxing. There's the rubber bands. Yep. They look Pretty much like they're just pressed out of a rubber mold. Wow, the holes don't even go all the way through. That's wild. I haven't seen one like that. I guess the first time you're going to puncture the hole, hopefully you find the right one that you want because uh, they haven't even been... Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's the bands and here's the charging wire, which is what I was going to get to. It's a basic standard magnetic coupled wire. That just couples into those four pins. No idea what's going on there. Your data pins are always on the inside. Power's on the outside. This works perfectly when you plug it into the computer to transfer watch faces and apps and things like that. Um, but there's another pin. If anybody knows what that's for, let me know. I can't figure it out for the life of me. Maybe it's in the manual. Let's check and see. The Thor 6 user manual. Wow, very simple. Um, Please check that you've got all this stuff in the box. And there's some tips. Mm -hmm. We're just freezing it slowly on the screen. So if you want to pause the video to read all of this stuff, you can. Some more tips. Backside, still in English. Okay, it's just an English manual. So this is definitely the international version. How you set your languages different button functions. We've got two of them. They're pretty standard. Quick access. Okay. And more tips. And that's it for the manual. So we got to put it together. There's nothing else in the box, I don't think. Nope. We're going to put it together with the bands and run through this one for you. Android 10 on this. I thought you might like to see... Uh, how this really works when I insert the... Okay, I'm going to get it to about right there and go for that hole there. Oh my goodness, really? Okay. Well, that's the one I'm going to use. Uh, yeah, you could use other ones if you want to, I'm sure. Um, that's a little loose. No, that's just about right. Okay, we got it on the arm. I'm going to press the top button. We'll turn it on. Uh, sorry for my all scrapes and things. I do a lot of yard work outside, and yeah, they get scuffed up a bit. Um, so ignore all that, and we'll stay focused on the watch. It's booting up, says it's at Z Blaze. And while we're doing that, oh, I got it on the wrong arm. I'm going to bring over the Thor 5 um, Pro right here. And ironically, they're the same 1.6-inch display. Here we go with a stock watch face here. And there, you can see I put one of Alrod's animated uh, faces on here. Okay, I'm getting a push notification already because I am on Google and on the Internet. Um, you see the flat tire I was talking about? And you see the sizes of them side by side? Come on, light up. Okay, I guess it just depends where I'm showing you on my arm. But this is a little lower resolution uh, with the flat tire. This, of course, is new and uh, it's full round. And we have the, the same front-facing camera and we have the side-facing camera. So now I can take it off to really go through the workout with you. Uh, here we go. The side-facing camera on them both. So they've updated the design quite a bit here. They've changed the bezel. It's a bit more flashy of a watch than uh, what we saw in the Thor 5 uh, Pro. As far as the back goes, check this out. Here's the SIM card cover and the uh, heart rate diode and, of course, the charging. And there's a little bit of a change in design. And I wanted you to see this. I just about pulled it off. And I thought, no, I'm going to show you guys. Because see how clean that is right there? There may be a little piece of plastic actually covering it that needs to come off. Now, don't gouge it trying to get it off. But if there is a piece on there, you're probably going to want to take it off 
Looks fine to me, so I'm not going to get in there and dig on it, but um, just be aware that every place there could be a little piece of plastic, check it to see to make sure that there isn't, okay? Let's get on with it. This is uh, Android 5, uh, 7, uh, 10. Where am I? <laughs> We're on Android 7, and so 10, wake up. Android 10 has a bit of a different layout. You can hardly see it under there, but there's some icons for um, Bluetooth uh, connection to the phone and SIM card. Um, and they'll light up, of course, if they're connected. You got your power level and time. When you slide down, when you go to the right, now you're getting into all these different things like a quiet mode that you can turn on and off here. Uh, your overall brightness okay which can get seriously bright there's really really bright and then there's nighttime really really dim i'll run it on probably two maybe three let's try that and if it washes out we'll take care of that this turns on airplane mode this is cellular um this one is for your gps location and it's still google's still trying to get me to do things Okay, don't want those notifications. Uh, Wi-Fi uh, is, is set up here, and those are all turned on right now as well. Come over one more. No, can't. That, that. You see, there's only two icons at the top. Now, that's a bit different than the uh, Cospet Prime 2 that we looked at. We had one more to go over with the clean button that you could press so the uh, Android 10 is implemented a little bit different on both of these when you go to the left as you saw we have notifications you see all the icons up here at the top go to the right you got your app drawer and go one more and you're getting into your overall fitness section and that's all you can do that way and when you go up now you're getting into the new implementation of your step count uh, calories burned and distance traveled stuff that you can also go down like this and look at your totals for each of the days. Then there's the music player. And then over here, you've got weather. So this has all the other stuff except for that uh, one aspect of the clean button that was on Android 10 on the other watch. As far as watch faces go, there aren't too many of them. So I'll run through that quickly. Press and hold. That's the first one. Here's another one. It's got a little bit of uh, animation going on in it inside, which is kind of different and unique. There's a very plain watch face. Different one that shows some of your aspects on here of um, heart rate and temperatures always in centigrade. We still don't see Fahrenheit on watch faces. Here's another overall watch face. And yet another one. What's nice is that they're pretty unique. I haven't seen a lot of them. Although this one I've seen that you can download from their overall server. I believe that one too. Are we at the end? We're close. I'll just page through the other ones. Ah, and here, here is one of Alrod's animated faces. Alrod's a watch uh, creator par excellent. He's got a whole bunch of collections of different watch faces, and I always try them out as a test of whether the watches really work well or not. This one does, so Android 10 and the implementation on the Thor 6 come together perfectly to be able to handle animation. There's other things having to do with touch spots and whatnot. That needs some work. Android 10 is a little bit different than Android 7, so watches have to be modified to work on Android 10 if you're going to touch a button and go to um, heart rate, for example, or something like that. Okay, so those are the watch faces. And now, I guess we'll go over into the apps. you got phone, contacts and SMS that all relate to the SIM card you put in the back needs to be a GSM network SIM. So you got to go with a carrier like AT&T or T-Mobile in the USA that has data support. And when you do, that should be able to get you on 4G uh, this way. But you do not have the capability with Android 10 to Bluetooth connect this to your phone so that you could make calls and answer calls from your watch you know, that are coming to your phone. That's called Bluetooth calling, and it's not supported. Not in Android 7, not in Android 6, so only a couple did, but it was supported in Android 5.1, in the old, old watches, uh, just to let you know. 
going to come back to settings. You've got um, dial market. Now, here is uh, a direct connection to the server that uh, houses all of these different uh, watch faces. If you download them, they have a check mark by them. And they just go on and on and on for, I don't know, there's a couple of hundred at least in here. You tap the button, it will bring it in. You come back to the watch faces, and there you go. Uh -huh. It still wants me to do that. There's the watch face we just downloaded. You can also get to that by pressing and holding and scrolling all the way to the far end, and you'll get a little plus sign, and you can get into that same thing. They decided to make it easier by giving you an app called Dial Market. Same on the uh, Cospet Prime 2, and I presume it's going to be the same on all Android 10 watches. Your overall desktop settings is where you can uh, select your dial, which is the same as pressing and holding. It activates that, but you can do it with this app. You can change the menu style to one where it's curved, or they're straight, or they're in groups of three, or they're circular around a clock. Uh -huh. I like to run it in that one, so we're going to keep that. And we were in desktop settings. And then you have your switch styles. And this, I'm not too sure what this is doing, but you have all these different kinds of ways of shifting. Okay, so how it's going to go between pages. Ah, okay, so now it's doing handling that differently. So that's a different setting we haven't seen before that's coming to us with Android 10 on here. And that's desktop editing. you got a basic browser. Camera will come back to it. Got to remember, settings and camera, coming back to that. And gallery, of course, goes with camera. Your calendar is just a basic calendar, nothing fancy here. You can't go into it or edit it. And i um, not sure about being able to put Google Calendar on if it will conflict with that or not. Heart rate monitoring is the basic uh, heart rate with the diodes in the back. Um, all right, we'll take a quick look at it. It comes on, the diode lights up. It's a single diode. This is one area they haven't changed or improved in years. I mean, the very first Android watches had exactly the same thing. And when you look at other um, bands and watches we're doing on this channel, and we've got things that are measuring your blood oxygen, that are monitoring your sleep apnea, that are doing all kinds of exotic ECG reporting and letting you know if you have AFib possibly, and all you got is heart rate, they're way behind on Android, on all of them. Not a dig on this particular model, but on the entire class of watches. They're just really way behind on health. These are not meant for health. There's no sleep monitoring app in this. You have to put a diff put one on. They're Android, so you can add something. And I would recommend an app called Sleep as Android. If you want to have sleep monitoring and you plan to wear it uh, at night, uh, overnight, uh, that's a good one. But it doesn't come stock on here. You got the music player, a basic sound recorder. File manager now shows you your total 64 gigabytes, how much you've used up. You tap it. You can get into all of your different things. These are some apps that I have side-loaded. I have them on my computer, and I drop them in here. I update the time that I update that, so I know I've got the latest ones. And then... From within here, I can install those apps. It makes it much faster than going to um, the Google Play Store all the time. And Clock Skins, this is where you put in all the different um, folders that contain the different clock skins or watch faces that you're going to be using as custom. Okay, And it shows you your used and available all on there. you got the weather optimization now. There's these different ways. Here's that clean task. Well, it's a little bit different. This is the battery saver thing where you can come in and select different apps, I pr presume, to run in the background or not. You can do screen lock and, of course, face lock with this watch. And because it has a front-facing camera, it's really easy to use when you turn it on or you know press the button to light it up and it's locked. You just point it at your face and it comes on instantly. We've got an old video up that talks about setting up face unlock. Uh, if you want to learn how to do that, third-party app adapters and so forth. Your system work mode, we're on Android 10 with a quad, an octa-core processor. You want to go into performance mode, you should have one screaming watch. 
So that's available to you too. Just monitor that the watch doesn't get too hot and how fast your battery drains if you use that. The App Store is just a real simple thing now and it only has this thing, a game uh, on it that you can download. It used to have Facebook and WhatsApp and all those things. They've taken that out. You have to have a Google account, log in and download it from the Google Store now for all of those. Your overall fitness, the app itself has changed. Look at this, it's got different color icons. This is the same thing as when you swipe over here and you have all the color pictures of people. But this is the actual app where you can go in and see your records, if you have any, under each sport. And most importantly, you can come over here and you can turn on using positioning, which integrates GPS with your fitness. So running, walking, cycling will all have trajectory information that uh, uh, you can track for your distance and pace and all those other kinds of things. So that's really good. It's a much more advanced version here. Assistant is not your Google Assistant. You have to download that icon separately if you want to use the full features of Google Assistant. Get that from the Play Store. This is for when you're tethering it to the Y Watch on the phone. If you don't do it when you initially start up, you can come in here, get it all set up on the phone, point the circle on your phone to the QR code. It will marry the two together, it'll pair up, and then you'll be able to do all these things like remote capture, music control, find your device. We got another whole video on the Y Watch 2 app, just the app, if you want to learn how to use the app that works with this and all Android phones, uh, Android watches. This is the actual Google Play Store, Google Maps, and Google itself, which you can use the OK trigger word with this if you have it set up for that or you can just go in here and do all your Google searches and whatnot as well and that is it for stock apps that are installed in this watch we've looked at the watch faces on the back I want to show you um, the sim card cover you just simply with fingernails open it up so as far as water retention waterproofing goes it all depends on the integrity of that little rubber gasket as to whether your $100 plus watch is going to be safe in water or not. I wouldn't risk it personally, um, but some of them claim IP67. Just be careful. Uh, if you do plan to be near water or if you're going to be using this heavy uh, exercising and you tend to sweat, grab a piece of electrical tape or some other waterproof tape and just tape over that. If it's clear tape, you can even tape over this and just leave it there. You don't need to open that often to put a SIM in unless you're taking the SIM from your phone to your watch and back to your phone and so forth, which you can do as long as it's the same compatible GSM network. But if you have your own separate SIM in here, put it in here and tape over that. That's my advice for you. Don't tape over the battery connectors. It's nice that this is recessed now, so when it's on your arm, it's not going to touch your skin and, you know, corrode over time. Uh, so that's a, a nice upgrade. Okay, we accidentally went into an app there. And camera and settings, right? So let's get into settings and show you a bit of difference that you've got now with the new Android 10. Your network and internet are all in here. You set up your Wi-Fi. It's going to show you how much data you're using. So if you're on a data plan with the SIM and you're not doing hot Wi-Fi, I think it'll show you how much you'll be doing there too. You can do hotspot with this and of course airplane mode as well. Your connected devices for Bluetooth, you can actually pair this with headphones if you want to so that you can put music in here and play it through your headphones while you're jogging and whatnot. Just like you would with a phone, that's how you'd pair a new device. Um, it's going to show up as Thor 6, uh, you know, whenever you need to pair it directly that way. Then you've got your apps and notifications. And this is simple. It shows you basically what you've looked at in the past and all of your apps that you have installed here. And any of them you want to go into, you can come in, you can open it, you can force stop. You see on... Uh, the calendar, I, I can't disable it. So if I want to put in Google Calendar, which uses the same name, there may be a conflict and it'll either not run or you know, we don't know yet. And it, there may need to be some fixes to make that happen. We saw that before on earlier Android versions and they had to mess with it and so forth. You have all the different icons and uh, when you get into something, 
um, I don't know, let's say fitness. You have notifications, you have permissions, the amount of storage and cache, and you can clear all that stuff in here just like you would on a phone. So we, we got a good implementation of app control in here. You've got your overall battery level and shows you apps that are running. You can turn on battery saver, check your battery usage. The display is where you're going to go in here. You can change your brightness. This is new. This is this new night mode. And I'm going to say turn on now. And notice that the intense, the uh, the the color of it changes to a, a kind of a brown. And I can turn it way up. And, and that's supposed to soften the screen, especially at night. Um, up to you if you want to use it. You can set a schedule, even have it turn on and off at sunrise, sunset, which is kind of cool because it, of course, knows what time it is and it knows where you are, so it should know when you do that. You have dark theme now, so your apps can show up properly in dark mode if they're compatible. And you change your screen time out here from 15 seconds up to 30 minutes. I typically keep it about five minutes. Twist your wrist to uh, see the time here or from the icon from before. You could do that. And you can have it wake up the watch when you have um, notifications come in if you want to. In sound, and this one's a bit important, you've got, of course, a control of all of your sounds, vibration, uh, what the sounds will be like. All that stuff is the same. Then you've got these things, dial pad tones and power on sounds. Now, if you don't want that sound when you turn the watch on and turn it off, you know, like if you're going to put it to bed at night and your spouse is asleep and you turn it off and it makes that loud, you can turn this switch off and now you won't have the boot up and boot off sounds. Okay, irregardless of what you've got the other things set for here. They're independent now, the quiet mode and the silence of the sounds are two completely different things. You with me? That was sound. Then you've got your basic storage, and that's showing you what you've got in uh, your, your total. You can do a free up space. You can see how much uh, of, of the space you have is being used for certain things in there location information, your overall Google services. Now, when you go in here, that's your overall Google account. And changes you make here affect your account, which can permeate all across your devices, your phone, your TV, everything. So be careful what changes you make here. They're not just applying to this watch. If you decide, oh, on my watch, I don't want this and this and this and this, and you shut all that down, you may be shutting it down for your whole account. And then finally, system, where you have your languages, Okay, I'll show you your languages. Uh, this is how these things get so long. Uh, it's English, United States. I'm going to say add a language. You can add more than one. So these are the supported languages now in the Thor 6. I'd show it to you because it is different, apparently. Uh, a, a subset of what you get on the um, Cospet Prime 2 which was a lot, lot more uh, languages, but that's what's supported right now here. They could be added over time through firmware updates, but um, you have to check on that. Virtual keyboard, you may be asked by Google to install the Gboard keyboard, and you could try that. This is where you could control it. That keyboard has the microphone capability. You can set your date and time. You can set your reset options. All of that stuff is available there. And about the watch is where you find out if you have a wireless update. Scroll all the way down. You can check your build number. This is running version 1.2 of the uh, software, and it shows you the date. Uh, what is it? October 15th. You hit wireless update. It's going to check. And if you have a wireless update waiting, it would tell you, and you can download it and install it. In the review of the uh, Prime 2 and in a whole separate video on setting up an Android smartwatch, I talk about how to do this and do it properly so you get the best use out of your watch and you make sure you don't have options where it might crash on you and uh, give you problems. It's good to handle firmware updates properly. So that's a quick overview and unboxing 
And that's all we're doing now. We're looking at what it is when you take it out of the box, basically. Um, there will be other times that we can go into things like Antutu reports and maybe even try to do battery testing and, and cellular calls. And Oh, i got to show you the camera, don't I? Okay, I'll come back and do that. Um, let me tell you briefly then that you can get it from AliExpress. These guys like to know that we are letting you know how to get these watches because they send them out to us. Bang good. Um, Otherwise, I have nothing to show you, right? Okay, let's go do camera real quick. Um, I'm going to do it just straight on here and show you. There's the front-facing one. There I am. Okay, so we've got that here. And if I tap that button, I can do recording on video or I can take pictures. And this is what's new now on the camera implementation in Android 10 is the way it shows you these different options. You see all that? If I touch the one on the right, I'm switching to the back camera where I put a box of oatmeal over here. And that's interesting. I It's pointed funny anyway. I'm going to take a picture of that. Uh, and I'm going to come back in here and show you that I could also go in and change the mode of operations on here with the scene mode. I can go into picture settings, 1.5 megapixel, 1.3, 1. Now this is interesting. Make note. And I, I saw this when I tried this earlier and checked the size. It's saying that the maximum pixel size for this camera is 1.5 megapixels not five megapixels. Mm -hmm. And likewise, if I come back to here and show you the front facing camera, I'm going to come in here to the picture size. And that's also 1.5 megapixels. Now I have a prototype watch. This may not be the final production version. The specs say they're five megapixel cameras, but the software and the results that I get are um, 1.5 megapixel maximum. So not sure what to say other than there you go. That's the results. Gallery, I'm going to come in here and show you that um, cereal box and test the pinch and zoom, which I don't have, but I can double tap and zoom in, double tap and zoom out, double tap and zoom in. One level of double tap zoom and no pinch and zoom. So honestly, it's a step backward from what we've seen in a lot of different cameras, um, which is sad. Uh, they should be at least five megapixel and we should have pinch and zoom capability. Here's a lot of the watch faces I've installed that I like that are fun. Um, yeah, uh, no, I'm not gonna tell you where you can get all of these. I've collected them over years and I don't remember the resources, although, Alrod, I can tell you his. This is his surfer's watch, and I like that one. That's a lot of fun. Now, one last time. We'll be out of here. You'll see this again. We'll be back. We're going to do more comparisons and other things, but i got to keep moving on because we got a bunch to introduce to you uh, in initial unboxings. The AliExpress, Z-Blaze official store. Check the link down below. Pick this thing up. They got discount prices. 1111 is a big holiday. Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Get yourself ready because uh, they usually have limited quantity. Uh, if you want to buy these things at a good price, uh, check those those particular dates. Banggood, same thing. In the show notes, I'll have the link. Coupons if they're available. Uh, in fact, there's a special um, link, I believe, for this one that, that Banggood's offering. So make sure you check the show notes uh, with the video and use the links there because that gets you the best deals and helps us out here too. That's it. Thanks for watching and <laughs> we'll see you again soon. Okay, now let's have some fun. Here we go. Here's the Thor 6. Here's the Thor 5. We compared these two together. Oh, I still got my little plastic right there. And that's how they stack up with each other. Four thigh, four thigh Pro, right? Thor 5 Pro, Thor 6. What about the Rollme S08? What do you think? How thick is it? <laughs> how about camera placement and whatnot? <laughs> how about overall size? And this is another one of Alrod's custom faces animated. It's pretty cool. Um, okay, that's the Rollme... Um, 
the SOA, S08. It's also the Brave, I think it's called as well, by a different company. And the Genesis. Yeah, my favorite still with the front-facing camera and the forward-facing camera. Again, another one of Alrod's faces. Here's how these stack up size-wise. Quite a bit different overall screen size, right? So we got a bigger screen with the Thor 6. Mm-hmm, that's how those look. There you go there. Okay, okay, I know you want to see it. Part the Red Sea. Bring it over here. Here we go. There <laughs> is the Cospet Prime 2 Plus. Man, man, oh man, it's a big watch. But wait, the battle begins. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. There is the LEMT, right? LEMT. I think this is bigger. What do you think? Wow. Wow. Anyway, whatever your passion, big, square, big, round, or more reasonable sized, we got it. Oh, oh, oh. I got I got something new coming. It's Android 7, but it's regenerated Android 7 in a cool new way, and it's not like any of these. Have you subscribed? I hope so. See you back here.